All right, class, part two of Phyllis Wheatley. We are back. Sorry, got interrupted right when I was telling you about how her poetry was used as a... They were trying to get people to subscribe to her poetry. Very much like a subscription, like a streaming subscription service like we have nowadays, right? Um, you know, where we would stream content that we want to watch or, or, or maybe, you know, like a podcast listen to. Well... Um, they wanted people to subscribe to her poetry. So as she wrote poems, they would be, they would be distributed to the people who paid for the subscription to her poetry. So obviously she must have been quite a voluminous poet, poet to be able to, uh, sustain subscription services. Now, no one seemed interested enough in a young African enslaved girl's writing to subscribe even though as a 13-year-old, Phyllis had actually published a poem in 1767 and another in 1771 that made her famous. In search of a publisher for a book of 28 poems Phyllis had written, the Wheatleys sent Phyllis with their son Nathaniel over to London, where she was welcomed by wealthy abolitionists. Um, so abolitionists are people who want to free slave to free enslaved people. So um, some really wealthy abolitionists welcomed Phyllis with open arms. They were very excited to meet her and read her poetry. So by 1773, Phyllis's poems were finally published in a volume entitled "Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral." which ranks her as not only the first African-American woman to write a published book of poetry, but also the first African-American author of any English-speaking biological sex to do so. All right, so pretty neat claim to fame she has, especially given the times. The times were so uh, inhospitable for this kind of thing to happen, and yet it happened, and she published uh, her volume of poetry. Phyllis could have actually stayed in England, in fact, and claimed her freedom there. Um, you know, so she wouldn't be a slave anymore, an enslaved person anymore, because England had a law that any enslaved person brought over to England from the colonies was entitled to freedom. However, Phyllis returned to America when she heard that Mrs. Wheatley was sick. And three months before Mrs. Wheatley died in 1774, Actually, so, yeah, before she died, the Wheatleys finally freed Phyllis from enslavement. So, she, like, a few months right before her death, Mrs. Wheatley and the family freed her. So, pretty neat story. Anyway, I am looking forward to our discussions that we're going to have on Phyllis Wheatley. So, I turn you now over to Phyllis Wheatley herself uh, and John Wheatley's letter of introduction to her um, volume of poetry that she was able to publish and Phyllis Wheatley's poem of hers that we read from that volume called 2SM, in other words, Scipio Moorhead, 2SM, A Young African Painter on Seeing His Works. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> 